Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. That was too lengthy, didn't need all of that. Uh, some of you who don't know me, yes, I've been in the trade for a while. Ravinder Sethi is my name. And I am uh, going to have a panel a discussion over here, a little bit different from uh, Mark did. Uh, but uh, is there's going to be some uh, interflow of uh, information over there. You know, as it's, you can see, it's very simple. You know, crossing the line, business challenges across boundaries. You said borders, exactly the same thing. Uh, you know, we've got about 40 country plus people over here. So one choice I had was boundaries. Okay, let's have 40 people over here and talk about it. My president said he'd throw me out of the venue. He'd throw me out of Hyderabad if I did that. So we restricted it and we kept ourselves focused to a few areas and one particular service. I'm very pleased and honored to invite over here with me my friend from the Russian uh, Federation, uh, Sergei Alexeev, who's a very, very dear friend of mine, president of the REUF, vice president of Expo Forum International, and vice chairman, Council of St. Petersburg, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, past president, Ufi, right? Please. And uh, we have with us uh, Chris Keith. Chris, where are you, my friend? Chris is CEO of the Association of Event Organizers of the UK, which represents about 700 uh, UK organizers, a lot of them prominent who are doing business uh, in India. And <coughs> from the Far East and Singapore, I invite uh, Rosalind Ang, please come over here. Rosalind is uh, a very, very experienced uh, player for India, plus the Far East, very well known. Immediate past president of Sashio's, third vice president of FICA, MD Globe International Events Consultancy. I had also had the honor of being your sightseeing guide about 15 years ago when you visited India first. And uh, now from my Indian friends, we have broken it up into, we have with us uh, from the Confederation of Indian Industries, one of our leading associations, India CAI, uh, Jay Shankar, General Manager, Trade Fairs. Shankar, please come on board, enlighten us a bit during the course of the time. And from the private industry side, we have one of the players who's uh, doing business with quite a few players, not only now, but for years, Rajan Sharma, Managing Director of Interad's uh, Exhibition Private Limited. <coughs> Last but not the least, what you've seen over here, ladies and gentlemen, is a geographical uh, flow. But there is a common link there's a common link which is applicable for everyone, how to make these business challenges uh, easier, and that is logistics, something close to my heart. And I'm pleased to have with me over here in India and presently to be on my panelists. Uh, I sit on the board of uh, AILA, the International Exhibition Logistics Associates, Marianne Eubank, the chairperson of AILA, who is with us, who will throw some light on how making it easier uh, uh, across the globe on the, the, the business world, right? Please, welcome all four of you. So I'm going to take a seat, and I'm going to have a little informal chat with uh, all of you. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, many of you know that <clears throat> the India and the, the development market for India, from an exhibition point of view, the global market, <clears throat> through, you know, it started in the mid-70s, 75, when... Pragati Bindan came about, we had uh, the Asia, uh, what was it? Uh, and the India Engineering Trade but it was actually in the early 60s when India really started going global, and it was Russia. And there was one gentleman over here, Dr. Vishwanath, in the, in the early 60s, who actually started doing global exhibitions in Russia and vice versa. Very coincidentally, Dr. Vishwanath's son is sitting here with us, Rajan. So I'm going to come straight to you because, you know, Russia is very close to our heart, and uh, we want you to talk about business challenges, how things have changed from the 60s uh, to what they are today. I know you've got a little presentation we'll put on, and you can quickly go through it and and you said you'll hit on one, one slide over there. Am I, am I correct? Yeah. You can Mark start. Three. I already uh, mentioned that we, in reality, we started our business between Russia and India 550 years ago. There was first trade mission from Russia to uh, India, and then Russian people first time 
so elephant which was uh, bought in India and brought to Russia. Can you imagine by uh, walking, not not by train? So uh, it was uh, in reality yes, it was a country number one. And I remember I was not so how to say all the time I have been in school, <laughs> and uh, there was uh, which uh, uh, goods we uh, we've got in uh, shops because I haven't been uh, yet in industry, clothes, textile. Shoes, Indian tea, three elephants. Everyone from my age asked three elephants. So uh, it was very good. Then step by step, uh, you, uh, your participation growing. Then uh, unfortunately, in uh, early 90s, uh, situation has changed. So before, all our relations, trade relations, was through government. Right. So because we are big friends. Our government was obliged to buy a lot of goods in India, and they have to buy everything, a lot of goods from us. Steel, uh, machines, and so on. So, uh, the same in China, by the way. You know that first, uh, first uh, exhibition center in Shanghai had been built by, by Soviet Union in the 50s. Right. So uh, nowadays, situation changed. But nevertheless, you know that uh, if you're looking for uh, participants from Asian part of the world. India is number one, number two. Number one is uh, China, number two is India. But of course, you're right, you, uh, we've got challenges nowadays because, to my opinion, don't want to criticize your errors uh, too much. We still keep keeping old habits to, you know, to maybe somebody will help us to sell or to buy. Now, situation is new. We, we've got pri private uh, companies, and they have, can choose Indian, Chinese goods, European, and so By the way, maybe for you it's good information. Now we've got sanctions, uh, anti-sanctions yeah. against yeah. Europe and, uh, sorry, my friends, David, uh, uh, United States, so we cannot anymore sell and buy. So uh, prospectives for Indian companies is very good. You can uh, be more active uh, uh, in our country. And I notice I've got statistics, uh, that uh, Indian participation growing up right. quite, quite, quite good. So very welcome. This is about my first advice. Uh, please uh, try to uh, understand market. We've got such uh, understanding that's uh, marketing. Please, uh, I, 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 can be, I, I can help you because we just signed agreement between Indian uh, and Russian uh, exhibition okay. associations. Yeah. So please right. don't hesitate right. to, to come to us and ask us what to do because to my surprise, uh, it's very often we've got strange cases that Indian companies can come, let's say, to Yekaterinburg, to Alexander, and start to participate in B2C shows and uh, trying to right. sell from the boots their goods. But unfortunately, they maybe don't keep in mind that we've got customs regulations. So you must know that we've got right. very quite strict regulations. Right. So uh, I prepared, uh, Ravi, uh, my presentation, now no time to show, yeah. that I will keep in, uh, your, uh, uh, in, in your association. Please place it to your uh, uh, website, and maybe colleagues can uh, right. sh uh, see it and uh, understand how we really participate in the Russian huge ex ex exhibition market, because we are developing very fast, we don't depend very much from import, and so welcome, welcome to us. And we are happy to join your shows, as you know that one year ago, it was special uh, body had been established in, uh, in Russia, so-called Russian Export Center. They've got the finances, budget, so we can easier to uh, uh, approve uh, Russian participation in your show, but we need Real information. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. You made a very interesting point. Maybe I'll come back to you later, time permitting. That actually, over the years, your business challenges have actually become more, more complex and difficult when the government going away and privatization taking place, where you would think it would be uh, the other way around. But, but maybe we'll come back. Issues uh, on a macro level, of course, you've suggested. Chris, I'm going to speak to you and ask you, uh, you know, business challenges from the UK, et cetera. I mean, I know you're going to be going to get some standard, standard answers and good answers. But are there any specifics now where the challenges have changed because of new circumstances which were not existing? I think 
that's a, a really good point and said thank you for the uh, opportunity to be on the uh, panel. Um, to, just to start with, the, uh, the AI has around about 100 members and there are around about 950 uh, exhibitions of scale you'll have to go up a bit. That, that happen in the UK. So there's around uh, 950 exhibitions in the UK. Um, I think in terms of challenges in coming, the, the government support hasn't been there as we've heard in the previous session in terms yeah. of recognising the value of the sector. Um, it's beginning to change. Uh, there is recognition, there are events, boards, uh, there are industry coming together. Um, but I still think in terms of challenges of crossing boundaries, the, the support hasn't necessarily been there. Um, and there is the B word, uh, of course, which is, which is very prevalent, the Brexit word. Uh, that's breeding, uh, again, quite a lot of uncertainty in terms of what that means. So I think that uh, I think that's probably prompted more more change to, 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 the, to the sector. So, but in terms of a challenge, the political uncertainty is also important. And then finally, uh, I, I was asked to keep this short, uh, but I think that the third challenge that we've got is most probably uh, venue stock. Uh, we had the, one of our iconic venues in London uh, knocked down a few years ago, and, and the impact of that is certainly being fed. So if you are thinking of crossing the boundaries to come to the UK, uh, the venue stock is, is certainly going to be quite light and difficult to get your tenancies. So is Theresa May going to make it very difficult for you with Brexit or is she going to make it easy? Quick, yes or no? I don't think she knows. She doesn't know. Oh, well, well if she doesn't know, well, we don't know. All right. Nobody's got a clue. Okay, good. I'll come back to specifics later. We haven't touched on those. Uh, uh, Ross, uh, you're based in Singapore, but uh, you're a representative of the ASEAN market. Uh, we've talked about... Uh, the Russian market, how things privatizing has become more difficult, has become challenging. They've got some issues in the, in the UK region in terms of government support going and uh, the venue status uh, happening and Mrs. May not being very helpful. Uh, what can you talk about, about the Far East? Well, I agree totally with Chris on uh, safety and security, technology issues and sustainability. Um, in fact, uh, this also affects uh, Singapore and also the ASEAN region and, and the Far East. I am talking more about the Far East uh, on, on this aspect. Um, I'd like to actually uh, inform uh, you that actually Singapore is the ASEAN chair this year and there will be several issues uh, being discussed at G2G level that uh, would impact the exhibitions industry um, in the near future. Um, uh, key challenges that will be discussed uh, would be cyber security, cyber threats. I think you've all heard about these uh, issues. Um, in, in view of the increasingly uh, network world that we are in now, and terrorism as well as fake news is going around. Um, so our government um, around uh, the ASEAN will be discussing this. And the other key point I'd like to just um, uh, highlight is on the Road and Belt Initiative. I think this would help um, uh, exhibitions in this region as well. Um, pretty much um, logistics is an issue. Uh, how do we connect goods and supply chain in the ASEAN region? Um, that will in the future impact um, the exhibitions coming uh, into uh, ASEAN regions where um, easier trading can be done, more uh, opportunities can be moved into this part of the world. Um, what we lack is the infrastructure aspect. Uh, I think um, they're going to discuss about capital uh, funds, uh, and this is one of the issues uh, that is um, uh, prim uh, important at this aspect. And at the G2G level, these issues will be discussed uh, during okay. this meeting. Um, the lack of capital funds for infrastructure projects is um, quite um, an issue and Singapore being the financial hub can actually play a key role in the financing, planning and execution of these projects. So we hope to be able to pave the way for our neighbouring countries and therefore, um, you know, like the building of the high-speed rail in the near future from Yunnan to China and then Malaysia and Singapore will then uh, connect us uh, a lot more effectively. All right, Ross, you've touched on uh, a subject which is uh, uh, which is very close to all our hearts over here. You know, security, and and nowadays it's not just uh, the physical security. Uh, more dangerous is uh, cyber security, uh, and I'm sure this is something which is affecting, which is affecting all of us, including our logistics uh, sector, which I'll come to you now. Uh, I'll ask this later on with everyone, but since you've, you've touched on it, have these issues now, to, to what extent have these issues 
you know, look, taking care of the security aspect, health and, of course, the normal sustainability, health and safety we already have, but more so security and cybersecurity. How much more challenging has it become from a business perspective from, from your area? Well, in the Far East, I think uh, we are uh, very much digitalized, and you know, also uh, this has already been uh, impact in this region. But I think right. uh, it is still um, a very important issue because um, terrorism and worst of all is fake news that is going around the market that will affect people's confidence in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, so I think now that the uh, G2G is going to discuss this issue, that will really help the uh, market and the industry as a whole. Yeah. So we'll have to see what comes up <laughs> after okay. the meetings. Okay. Before I come this side, Chris, quick word on security, cybersecurity. How difficult is it becoming now? as a business challenge? I think there's certainly a government response and there's lots of useful information that the government are putting through. Uh, also in the UK, we've been working through GDPR, uh, so there's been a, a real focus on data and how you keep the data, where you keep it, how you transfer it. So right. I think it's become a little bit just more of a important business thing to do as opposed to necessarily a, a massive issue overall. And, and the government's been very supportive of lots of good initiatives that we've been able to learn from as they have been with security with different measures. Okay, but yeah, do, you know, bottom line figures. Do organizers ha have to redo their budgets now a little bit dramatically to take care of these new elements? I, I think they've been included for quite some time, yeah. um, if I'm yeah. honest. Uh, it'd be interesting, there are other things that come along that are unseen. So there was a new launch healthcare show in the UK, uh, brand new launch, six weeks out. The NHS, the National Health Service, had a cyber attack, and they weren't able to communicate with their prospective right. visitors to turn to the show. So they had to be very dynamic and creative to communicate with that audience. That right. show ended up being a great success. So it, it could have an impact, but it's more of a business resilience uh, issue than, than necessarily a, 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 a method of doing business. Okay. Quick one from you, uh, Sergey. Cybersecurity is now it's become. This is uh, a serious issue. Uh, we, have, we uh, you know, in Russia, we've got very professional uh, teams who involved in the cyber uh, security. Yeah, you know very well. Uh, Mr. So, Trump uh, knows about it, I think, <laughs> David. Yeah. And uh, to be frank, uh, we are looking very much for this, and we've got absolutely new technology right. for crowd management. Let's say. <coughs> technology with whom we can uh, uh, watch for a crowd and understand about, uh, to recognize, uh, you know, criminal faces and so on and so on. Right. In Russia, we are very uh, forward uh, on these matters. So uh, it's a uh, it's very important question. I yeah. agree with you. Uh, uh, challenge number right. one in, in, our, in our days, in our industry. We right. must uh, follow very carefully on this. Right. I would have thought so. Right. Uh, we've come from the northern... Uh, eastern, uh, the Russian hemisphere, and I come to the right over here, uh, two areas which are very close to my heart, my India and my logistics uh, business. Uh, let's talk about, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you, Shankar, from an association point of view, what are the challenges we face? What can you as an association do? What have you been doing? Uh, and not only in India, but for doing uh, business overseas. Thanks, Ravi. I would like to change the bit of a mode. Why should we focus on challenges? Why don't we look at this as an opportunity? Close. I would rather look at this as an opportunity rather than being a challenge. Yeah? Everybody talking about Asia becoming a global hub and India becoming the superpower in, I don't know, 2025, 2030, whatever it is. Now, these are certain things which is in the air, which is in the news, government doesn't say, whereas a lot of other industry reports say that India is going to be the global superpower. Are we really in this? No. Now, there are a few ways to look at it. I would divide this into three buckets. One, if we are really looking at a cross-border in the global island, we should look at and map the emerging markets in sync with the government of India agenda in terms of the trade policies between the countries and the free trade agreement between the countries, and also look at 
EFDI is in a larger perspective because that is what is going to drive the market and especially the exhibition business. Because this is a platform for all those companies to test whether it is the right place to enter, do, do they have the right market, do they have the right customers, do they have the right suppliers for that. So we as an exhibition organizer or exhibition industry, we are actually creating a platform. In fact, to drawing back uh, to what Ravid said in 1974 when we started the Indian Engineering Trade Fair, then subsequently it got into International Engineering Technology Fair in 1984 after the globalization. In fact, from CI, we have paid way for the countries to come into India, look at the markets, see whether India is the right place for them to invest, get the right trade partners, and to get the right suppliers if they are to set up a foothold in India. So exhibition industry plays a very vital role in terms of the cross-border, whatever we are talking about here. And the second thing to make it happen is we need to sort of look at this as a knowledge transfer and the technology transfer in the emerging markets. To give you a recent example, last month there was a team of 30 people who visited India, uh, basically from the complete African country. And these are basically associations, not exhibition organizers. In fact, they wanted a sort of a, a complete training for them to say the how does an association conduct a trade fair to help their members. And this is an opportunity for us to sort of give us a knowledge transfer and equip them to do that so that we don't really stick to our business of doing the exhibition, but we also expand our reach and tell people, come on, we can train you. So this will also help us in both way trade and look at these companies coming into India or Indian companies going there. And the third bucket I look at is how do we get ourselves united? Now, we are talking about this is the market size. Maybe in the evening we'll see the report in terms of what is the market size, what is the square meter age, or who are the top players, everything. But with this, how are we going to take it further to the next level? Will this report help us to go to the government and tell them, come on, we need to have an industry status? Yes, I do understand. There are, apart from IEIA, there are a couple of other associations who are in the trade fair business. So with a unified approach, I think this is a way we got to go back to the government and say, come on, we need to have industry status for the exhibition industry. Because the number of people who work, which is sort of, maybe if I have to put the gross numbers together, which could be equivalent to any one of the other, the construction industry or to automotive industry. And these are sunrise industry, which the government is talking about today. So it is for us to go back to the government and say, can we look at an industry status for the exhibition industry? And one more point whether I would like to state is, while we were working with the government very closely, under the WTO G20 classification, exhibition is also part of it. So this could be a starting trigger for us to go back to the government and say, come on, this is as per the WTO, give us a facility. So as an industry status, so as an exhibition organizer or an exhibition service provider, as an industry person, we got to go and get the status from the government and see how do we move it further. So through this, if we get into the WTO norm, this will actually clear off all the challenges of cross-border what we are talking about. Because if we go into the WTO norms, then that okay. makes our life easy. Right. Okay, good. You know, you've changed the, as you could rightly say, you've changed the whole mode. And if we had been sitting here a couple of years ago, we would have been going on the same thing. We've got, you know, business challenges are because of the venues, business challenges are because there are no FDIs, uh, bureaucracy, red tapeism, etc. And this is this is interesting because what you have brought about is you've talked about not the challenges now in India that much, but the opportunities. You went a step further in talking about India now even uh, transferring knowledge. Right, you took groups into into Africa, but I'll just point to one thing, right, industry status. We need more from the CII and FICI, I know Pankaj Verma is over here, as the two main industry bodies to, to work with government. Mr. Goyal this morning was phenomenal. You know, I mean, he was such, so open, it was a breath of fresh air, right? Can we get a commitment from you gentlemen that yes, we strive along with the IEA to go for the industry status? That's a good starting point since Mr. Goyal has said this. And he actually from the Ministry of Commerce. So yeah. he could be driving it. And in fact, 
CIA is part of the ITPO board. Yeah. So through that, we can put up a unified effort to make this happen. But one thing is we need to go with a very clear report because when we started the discussion, you know, uh, we are, uh, I mean, we went with, we met the Ministry of Commerce. Yeah. They wanted one number which we could not come up. Yeah. So maybe this report could be a trigger to go back to them and say, come on, this is a published report and this is where yeah. we are. And this actually gives us sort of a white paper for us to present it to the government and say, and we can actually demand it now. Right. I will actually preclude any questions which might come later on, which might come, is also on GST. A great new you know, adventure taken on, a very positive adventure taken on, but there's still, there is still ambiguity, especially with a lot of us sitting over here. That could be a part of it, but then we, will, we won't go into detail on that, right? Thank you. I see that as a commitment from the associations. Private sector organizers. Rajan, Interads, uh, Interads has been in the exhibition business for very long, and as I said, actually, even when you were in short, right, when your father started it all, Dr. Vishwanath, what a great man. But now in this modern day and age, uh, just as your company as, a, as an example, but talking on behalf of, of, of the industry, the private sector industry, what are the, the business challenges? We've talked about cybersecurity, health and safety, sustain, but they, they all apply over here. They all apply over here. But what is there something more which is different which, which you feel has been a challenge for you, considering you have been working with partners from quite a sphere. You've been working with Americans, with Dutch, <coughs> with, with UK, you know, a, a wide sphere uh, of, of a geographical uh, business relationship. Uh, I guess, like Shankar said, uh, two ways to look at it. Uh, there is a knowledge transfer uh, when you're working with your partners. <coughs> But uh, rightfully, what you said in our case, and I'm blessed uh, that we are working with various partners from across the world, from, from the French, from the Dutch, from the Singaporeans to UK to Americans. Within America itself, if you work from one coast to the other coast, one thing is knowledge transfer. The biggest, I wouldn't call the word, uh, in fact, he has corrected me, Shankar, again. I wouldn't call it challenge. I will call that as an opportunity because you resolve the challenge first. Uh, the key is that multiple partnerships also bring in a thing called cultural exchange. Yeah. So uh, I always say that, like, like, take an example of McDonald's. McDonald's is a brand across the world. McDonald's only puts a alu tikki or a vegetarian burger in India. They don't do it anywhere else. And that is a cultural adaptation of McDonald's which is, I have to work in this country and I have to work with this culture, and this is what I have to adapt myself to. Similarly, the way the Indians have adapted from a, you know, from a change, I won't use the word change, but added on from a chola kachura, whatever you call that, to a McDonald's, is also an adaptation of that. So same is when you're working with a new partner, because don't forget your new partner or your partners come with a brand, and they are, they are right to become brown, brand product, you know, brand proud, brand protective. But having said that, they also have to be clear in how you present their brand. So you have to educate them culturally as to how we are different uh, from the West. What happens in Paris does not happen here, and what happens here does not happen there. So that is an ongoing process, more partnerships, more joint ventures. But as India is growing, and as India is being exposed to the world, I think that challenge or I would use the word challenge being overtaken. The opportunities, people are seeing that. But it is an ongoing process. Right. Of course, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a new subject brought up, you know, a business challenge because of cultural, cultural changes. But on the flip side, today, modern communications, travel, you know, CNN or whatever you call it, that cultural gap has reduced considerably. Now, if you, look, if you look, for example, I mean, today if you see in India, you know, mo most of the CEOs of uh, these multinationals, the American companies and all, are all Indians, right? So that cultural gap is still there, but would you not agree that it is now on a, on a shrinking, on a declining? It, I wouldn't use the word shrinking. I will use the word adapting. 
right. because, uh, for instance, in, I mean, in our teams, uh, you know, one guy, one team will say, I'm working with the French, and this is the way, the, you, you know, their MIS is a different way of reporting back, and the, and the, and the way the people work in the Far East is a different way. So it's, it's, it's an adaptation of, again, but the cultural uh, process of educating each other will never end. Right. It will, it's, it's a process which will carry on. You can call it a knowledge transfer, and you can call it a cultural transfer, yeah. but that's a never-ending process and will carry on. And the day I don't adapt to it, the partnership will not work. The day the other partner does not adapt to it, that partnership will not work. Who finds it more difficult, the, the foreign partner or the Indian partner? Uh, I wouldn't use the word again difficult. It's the question of adapting to each other. If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But most of the time, touch wood, it has I'm, worked. I'm, I'm and it to, should work. I'm trying to put him in a spot, you know. <laughs> okay, now I'll go regional-wise. Who's the more difficult ones, the Americans or the British? No, no, no. no. Okay. We all make the world. We all make the world. No, that, that was just uh, being uh, funny. Okay, it's interesting we've talked about the business challenges of uh, private sector now making it more difficult, uh, cyber security, sustainability now making it a bit more difficult, your lack of your government support for you, we need uh, more government uh, involvement, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, more recognition, uh, a cultural challenge, but in all of this business challenge, uh, <coughs> all of us over here, all of you who are doing the business, everybody, I've got one common uh, factor in there, which is one subject which we have picked up, and that's logistics. That's logistics. And <coughs> we, uh, we have an association, uh, ILA, uh, and, and, as, and as I introduced, Marianne, our chairperson is here. I'm proud to be a member of the board, and I sit with uh, Marianne. Marianne, how can, how can we make it easier for all these wonderful people over here to make their life easier in terms of their business challenges. We have a basket with all the challenges that everybody here has mentioned. And you put it in? We put it in, you know, and then we have to think globally, <laughs> because we, uh, as I said before, we start the day thinking in, in an event how to make the freight get from Russia to India and then go to Brazil, and then uh, we have to face different challenges, but they are, actually a little bit the same, but they are challenges. So we have to be creative, flexible, ad adapt. You know, we have to adapt ourselves in, in minutes and seconds, and, but it's possible. So we have to cover the entire globe. We have to be present in Singapore, in Brazil, and for example, in Brazil we have different customs regulation that a little bit similar to Russia, but completely different from the US and in the UK. So we have to, to uh, uh, think much wider than just in one thing. You know? so that, because we need, to, whatever it takes, whatever challenge it is, we have to make it happen. You know? And also, uh, we making uh, the project uh, succeed, but also considering the health and safety, the security. We have different aspects in security in our business. We have uh, uh, to consider the security aspects as terrorism and security as security. For example, in Brazil, we yeah. don't have terrorism. But we have a very big issue in security because we have the, the drugs and uh, gangs trying to control everything. And then you have in countries, in certain countries that we have the terrorism, so we have to adapt ourselves and even the security. And then you go to uh, venues where it's the perfect world that everything is easy. And then we go to places like Cuba that nothing works. Right. So we have to adapt, always. Well, I'm glad there's no Cuban association over here right now. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, uh, we come back to security. I'm talking about physical security. Uh, you know, the venues in today's day, many venues around the world become so secure. You know, we all sit very comfortable when we go into Excel or even uh, Pragati Madan or I'm sure in Brazil or even Russia. But the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable in this entire uh, industry process chain are the service providers. You know, like she said, when the trucks are moving in, the forwarders, 
you know, the stamp fitters, the other service providers. And for us, that's very crucial. And I can, you, I'm sure you will see what yeah, Isla Nothing is. happens is if the freight is not there. Yeah. The show doesn't happen. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it is a, a, a machinery show or even if a conference, if the material from the, 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 the exhibitors are not there, there's no show, there's nothing yeah. to present, yeah. you know? But on the flip side, the good news is that we are, uh, uh, as Ayala, the association, are working uh, within the organization of, of having uh, our own security systems, our own, you know, we have adapted the famous G-Guide uh, to uh, our needs, and I give credit to my, my chairperson, Marianne, for taking that initiative. We sit with UFI at forums on security, David has been a great help with IAAE. An inspiration. For, uh, an inspiration for security. So uh, from a logistic side, we are doing our very best to make it easier for all of them to, to you know, to, for their business challenges to be less challenging, right? Right, I have uh, 9.28 minutes left. A quick uh, round, I'm going to do this one subject over here. We've talked about you know, the macro aspect, business challenges, we've talked about the micro aspect, we've talked about uh, culture, right? Uh, government support. Russia, has it increased or decreased? Gov government support. As I told you, as I told you, one year ago, special uh, body, special committee have been established, so-called Russian Export Center, with state money, to support uh, participation for uh, Russian companies outside and for foreign companies inside of Russia. So, uh, because now, because of, thanks to Sunshine, I don't know, we've got a lot of goods to buy, uh, to sell abroad. Right. So, uh, and uh, can I use also 30 seconds, yep. Ravi, uh, to understand better Russia, my proposal, welcome Mark Date. 31st of October. Yes, yes. 3rd of November this year, 50, uh, 85th UFI Congress in my hometown, St. Petersburg. Please welcome and you will recognize new Russia, new world. And second, 6th of June, uh, 3 o'clock Moscow time, 5.30 Indian time. Uh, Global Exhibition Day, we've got special program. I will send it to you. We can make connection free of charge through special video, uh, uh, video uh, computer, computer program. Thank so please, you. then you can see what really happened in Russia. Well, I, Thank I, you. I appreciate your plugging in both of these, the Congress and the Global Exhibition Day. Quick one for Singapore and Asia and government support. Yes, certainly. Um, Singapore Tourism Board, um, STB, has always uh, been very supportive about our mines industry and they have various schemes to um, support foreign uh, events coming into the country as well. And I think we've got very good infrastructure and um, venues. Um, aside to that, of course, our service providers are, are also very experienced. Um, so welcome to Singapore. And if you want more information, just log into STB website. You can get all the information you need or come see me or Mr. Andrew, <laughs> who is also here. Um, I think there are also operational issues in um, other regional countries in ASEAN, um, um, like our neighbours, um, the Mekong region, for example, um, Vietnam, um, Myanmar and Cambodia. These, these are developing countries and they are starting to open up. So there are a lot of challenges for um, exhibition organisers, I feel, going into the country. Um, that's because they, they're still a very uh, young um, um, events uh, sector. Um, personally, I, I have some experience going into, for example, in Myanmar, I was quite uh, taken aback when we do hall bookings, for example. You don't get um, confirmation till like five to six months before your show date. So that's quite alarming for event yeah. organizers because we, we need to start promoting the event way in advance. And uh, these, these are frustrations sometimes and challenges that we, we get, you know. And um, let, let's talk uh, China, for example, when you do um, events in, in China, large-scale events, uh, as I know um, a few years ago already, uh, security is the prime uh, factor. Um, 
for a, for a large scale event of let's say 100,000 square meters, you would need something like 200 security guards right. just to be at the venue. So these are different uh, challenges that we face, but we embrace it with, with um, um, sharing of uh, knowledges and um, the ground support is really very important. The ground supply uh, service people, right. they really help to guide. So I would encourage them. Um, uh, industry um, organizers to work closely with local um, service providers who are actually on the ground and able to support your um, challenges and um, in fact make your um, whole operational aspect of project management a lot more easier. Thank you. Thank you. UK, will the DTI always remain broke or is there, there hope? There, there is hope. And the hope, oh, thank God for the that. hope is a, a guy from the event sector has taken on a, a director's role within uh, the marketing team at uh, okay. DIT, which is really good. Events have been written into the, the industrial strategy, right. uh, which again is very strong. And we have a first cross uh, government department uh, events industry board. Uh, so recognizing the value that events can play within the key sectors for the UK. So. It's the most progress I've seen in the UK in 10 years. Yeah, but are they going to put penny and pounds in there, or have they just set up the boards right now? We started off with soft support, letters okay. of support, attendance, right. and, and a process for that that's okay. handled centrally, so the single point of contact that we've mentioned a few times today. Um, and then I, uh, there, there, is a, there are some small funds, but for me it's more important that to sell the value of the sector, because yeah. uh, that's where you're going to need your long-term uh, stability. So that's the start point, and then we'll see what we can do. Right, thank you. I think we know the answer, but let's hear it. Government support. Great. That's the first answer, great support. Thanks to PM Modi. Yep. Every month there is something other happening from the government of India. And this is actually driving a lot of business for the exhibition industry. Starting from Make in India, which happened in Germany, then followed up in Make in India in Bombay. And now every state is looking at investment exhibitions. Yep. It's yeah, a huge boost for our industry. But Shankar, that's great for the industry, but that is because the government is doing their own events, right, Make in India. But in terms of support for the industry, you know, in terms of uh, industry status, there isn't any. There used to be at one time uh, big uh, support from uh, ITPO funds, Trade Fair Authority of India funds for going overseas. The India Convention, Convention bureaus over here, they get grants which we, which we don't get. So there's needs to be done, right? You know, there are two aspects. Either you want to take exhibitors from India overseas. Yes, it is still there under the MEA, the companies, the, the uh, industry associations and the exhibition organizers have to pitch for it. That is still there. Okay. Second, for subsidy for the conventions, what you're talking about, that is something that has been a change of uh, thing that we need to pursue again to see how we can do that. But even today, if the subject and the focus element is relevant, aligned with the government of India, there is nothing, they, they will not say no. But one thing is we need to have a right pitch and approach them. Okay, good. Arjun, last word? Uh, last I wouldn't agree with Shankar here because I think what we as an industry need privately uh, is definitely a huge government support. Uh, no doubt about PM Modi's initiatives, no doubt that uh, Skill India, Make India, Yep. It's all fantastic. Absolutely. It's excellent. In fact, if you see all the, I, 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 I have signed three joint ventures myself in the past 10 months. But having said that, that's very good. But what about the government support to the industry per se? Whether our pitch is wrong or right, that we have to address as an association. But can we survive without the government support? The answer is definitely no. Do we need more? Right. The answer is definitely yes. So I think Mr. Goyal, again, I come back to him, and uh, as a government body, not I, not Pragati, not Pragati Medan, but as a government body, you know, things are, are changing. I know this is not relevant from us, from a logistics point of but view. We but we have a different last support. We have a last different support to give. You know, we give support. Yeah. We do not we support. support. We give support to organizers. Yeah. You know, not only to move the freight from A to B, but before the show. That's the idea. We. We are an association that we have our internal training programs to be much more e efficient and more professional to give the support for the organizers before they are uh, promoting a show in different countries. So that's what the support that we, we give right. to, to you. Professional guidance on logistics. Right. So when, 
before organizing a show, before planning, right. consult us. Yeah, ayala.org. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is one of the very rare occasions that I am in time. Uh, we're not going to have time for questions and answers. We are running way behind time. And David is going to get very upset with me if I go into more of his time. If there are any questions, please, uh, all of us are here today, and we're here tomorrow as well. I thank you very much for sharing your knowledge, your expertise, and being with us. Uh, to my friends from the overseas, keep enjoying your, your stay with us for the next few days. And uh, good business. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you very much to the moderator and all our panelists. I'm requesting Mr. Vipul Agarwal, EC member IEIA, to kindly come up and give away mementos as a token of our appreciation and gratitude to our moderator and the panelists, please. Come closer. Agarwal requesting you to give away a memento, Mr. Ravindra Sethi. Ms. Yuban. Ms. Rosalind, please. Mr. Chris Skeet. Mr. Rajan Sharma. Mr. Sergey Alexeev. And Mr. Jay Shankar. Thank you very much uh, once again to our moderator and our panelists for that fantastic discussion.